to you in a minute long. Hi guys. Well, it is a gray gloomy day here in the collapse of global industrial civilization here in the great state of Texas here on Tuesday, March 7th, 2023, I believe. And uh, so anyway, we're going to do our pretty much our daily Doomer porn segment from uh, medium.com. And uh, today we're going to, this was came out, I guess, on February 24th by a fellow I have never heard of named Ron Imink, I-M-M-I-N-K. The first thing he says in his description is father of two, which is as far as I needed to get in the description, uh, but at least this father of two is not quite as much in denial as most breeders are about the state of the planet. So the title of his essay is Collapse as an Option. Collapse as an Option. Well, I, I guess uh, it's going to be an involuntary option, but uh, we w it will be the option. So what this is actually is I mean, it's his column. I'm assuming that the words are his and that these are not just verbatim outtakes of this book, which uh, I, I was talking about when it first came out. This is actually his review of a book that came out in 2021 called Deep Adaptation. <coughs> Deep adaptation navigating the realities of climate chaos and this is a book they don't say written by they say edited by Jim Bendell and Rupert Reed uh, you can find a long interview I had it was right about the time the book came out with Rupert Reed if you want to, if you go into my playlist, my interview playlist, Rupert Reed is pretty much up near the top. <clears throat> Never got the opportunity to uh, interview Jim. Uh, he agreed to be interviewed by me, and then after he had agreed, for whatever reason, he backed out of the interview and told me he was not a, that he wasn't doing interviews but then of course uh, my good friend and colleague here in the collapsosphere uh, uh, oh god now I'm forgetting his name this is very embarrassing Michael Michael I, I, I've interviewed the man and he's interviewed and I'm not never interview Michael I'm completely forgetting Michael's name last name uh, anyway, he interviewed Jim Bendell after Jim Bendell told me. Uh, but anyway, that's neither here nor there. Let's get on this. So this is a review of Deep Adaptation, Navigating the Realities of Climate Chaos by Father of Two, Ron Emink. Take it away, Ron. And Jim and Rupert. <clears throat> Is collapse an option? Well, that, 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 the question is moot. Is collapse an option? Whether or not it's an option, it's going to happen. Anyway, can professionals in sustainability, uh-huh, sustainability management policy and research, myself included, continue to work with the assumption or huh with the assumption or huh, huh, assumption or huh, huh, hope that we can slow down climate change or respond to it sufficiently to sustain our civilization okay maybe we'll find some answers in Deep Adaptation, 
Navigating the Realities of Climate Change is a very sobering book. Where are we after 125 years of climate science? The evidence suggests that we are not going to make it. The scientists have failed to convince us. We choose to save the industrial civilization by pursuing the growth of consumption of materials and energy. Politicians have failed us. The system is no longer fit for purpose. The stories did not stick. Climate change communication has not resulted in the changes that we all need to make. Right now, we are driving ourselves over a cliff. Now, it is too late. Thank you. And guys, I don't need to make the disclaimer every time I cover a, uh, anything about climate change that, uh, well, maybe I do need to make the disclaimer. If climate change or climate chaos, if you prefer, was nowhere in the menu, collapse would happen anyway. Okay, I don't think this fellow understands this. This father of two is not quite ready to go there. But anyway, I understand it. Now that I've made that disclaimer, let's get back to Ron. The idea that societies around the world could collapse in the coming years is now widespread. Hints, hints of the end of the world, hints of the end of the world are appearing everywhere. Yes, hints of the end of the world are appearing everywhere. A growing number of scientists and anyone else with a brain now consider what the most likely outcome of climate change is. A global societal challenge. I'm sorry. Is a global societal collapse. We are now beyond a number of cascading tipping points and more will follow. So now we must prepare for societal breakdown and ultimately collapse. The death of civilization, system collapse. There is now an academic stream about this named collapsology. I love it. Collapsology. I am a collapsologist. The book analyzes the cause. The science of global warming has failed spectacularly to emotionally connect with much of society, particularly those in the most powerful positions, rendering policy makers, don't you love that word, policy makers, ineffective despite repeated warnings. Why did scientists fail to convince? The problem is science itself. It is not absolute enough in its analysis. Scientific and academic texts are governed by the need for precision, by appeals to reason rather than emotion. They did not include philosophers, experts in precaution, ethicists, system thinkers, social scientists, and writers of imaginative fiction concerning the future. Classic storytelling. The ideology of ESCAPE, the ideology of escape, which comprises our assumptions of or beliefs in the following. Okay, 
entitlement, surety, which is another word for certainty, control, autonomy, progress and exceptionalism, disconnection from nature, the generalized belief that competition rather than cooperation is the natural condition for humanity. Being techno-optimistic, the delusion that with our brilliance, ingenuity, and technology, we can control our environment. There is also a system of denial. There is a fear of dependence, climate psychology. We are liable to feel not just grief and anger, but guilt and fear, perhaps depression too. Death at this scale is hard to contemplate. We are not able to conceive of our own destruction and possible extinction. And then there is institutional self-interest. You do not win votes with this message. It is bad for our current economic system. GDP becomes a laughable concept. These personal and institutional factors mean that environmental professionals may be some of the slowest to process the implications of the latest information. In the meantime, and I guess these bullets are just some of the points that I made in the book that Ryan pulled out of the book. In the meantime, the report of subsea permafrost destabilization in the East Siberian Arctic sea shelf, the latest unprecedented temperatures in the Arctic, and the recent data on nonlinear rises in high atmosphere methane levels combine to make it feel like we might be about to play Russian roulette with the entire human race. 17 of the 18 warmest years in the last 136 year record up to 2018 have all occurred since 2001. The IPCC has been found to have underpredicted sea level rise as part of its general understatement of existential climate risk. The rates of sea level rise suggest they may soon become exponential. Already we see impacts on storms, drought, and flood frequency and strength due to a change in the balance of the thermal heat in the oceans and atmosphere. The models today suggest an increase in storm number and strength. The models predict a decline of normal agriculture, including the compromising of mass production of grains in the northern hemisphere and intermittent disruption to rice production in the tropics. The loss of coral and the acidification of the seas are predicted to reduce fishery production by more than half. About half of all plant and animal species in the world's most biodiverse places are now at risk of extinction due to climate change, and I would only amend that to say that are at a growing risk of extinction due to climate change. It is unlikely we will keep within the unadulterated horseshit carbon limit. I added two words to that sentence. <clears throat> Some experts have argued for more work on removing carbon from the atmosphere 
with machines. Hmm. Unfortunately, the current technology needs to be scaled up by a factor of 2 million within two years, all powered by renewables alongside massive emission cuts to reduce the amount of heating already locked into the system. The current boom in sport utility vehicle sales obliterating the emissions savings due to the electrification of transport. Okay, disruptive impacts from climate change are now inevitable. The evidence is mounting that the effects will be catastrophic to our livelihoods and the societies that we live in. Our norms of behavior, which we call our civilization, may also degrade. Disruptions will include increased levels of malnutrition, disease, civil conflict, and war, and will not spare affluent nations. Starvation, destruction, migration, disease, and war will start to impact us all and will no, no longer be abstract concepts. With the power down, soon you would not have water coming out of your tap. You will depend on your neighbors for food and some warmth. You will, you will become malnourished. You won't know whether to stay or go. You will fear being violently killed before starving to death. Considering a situation where the publishers of this book will no longer exist, the electricity to read its outputs won't exist, and a profession to educate won't exist. Hmm. If we allow ourselves to accept that a climate-induced form of economic and societal collapse is now likely, I would say inevitable, then we can begin to explore the nature and likelihood of that collapse. What are the norms and behaviors that human societies will wish to maintain as they seek to survive? How do we keep what we really want to keep? What do we need to let go of in order to not make matters worse? Well, you can let go of having two children. Anyway, in case Ron is unaware of what you can let go of, it is let go of breeding. What can we bring back to help us with the coming difficulties and tragedies? With what and with whom can we make peace as we face our shared mortality? The four R's, okay, the four R's, resilience, relinquishment, restoration, and reconciliation, or cosmos, cosmos, compassion, openness, serenity, mutual mutuality, oneness, and solidarity. So far, there are four types of responses, romantic, revolutionary, rationalist, or reactionary to climate change read Ministry for the Future, a combination of all of those on steroids, and then he has a link to Ministry for the Future, which might be a future rant. There is no map. We are mapless. 
we cannot rely on previous perceived certainties, including our stories of progress, meaning, purpose, and identity. Within our modern cultures, we have also been schooled to feel fearful of not knowing. We grasp for correct answers rather than allowing for more not knowing and more mathlessness. All right, so what uh, are the solutions? The solutions the book suggests are meditation, deep listening, death cafes. I love the idea of death cafes. I need to look. I have to admit, guys, I don't know the definition of a death cafe, but it's very appealing to me. Right after death cafes, life-sustaining systems and practices don't forget a shift in consciousness. Trusting Gaia. Don't forget the noble savage indigenous communities. Uh huh. How about seeing with new eyes? How about active, uh, active, uh, active hope? Leadership. There you go. Sense making. Sense making. Collaboration, conversation, education, experimentation, attention, localization, decentralization, simplification, community supported agriculture, energy democracy, cooperatives, bartering, local currency, credit com commons, transition networks, hyper-local resilience, etc. I don't think Ron is going for it. If anything, the book is a wake-up call. It is an academic book, so the storytelling leaves much to be desired. In some ways, this book reminds me of the area partnership days, the credit unions, energy and food independent communities, and creating local currency, all initiatives in Ireland. Local community development is the future. Also read, thank you for being late. So I'm not going to get off into another rant uh, insulting your intelligence or mine with that list of solutions. Uh, deep adaptation, I think, means dig your dumper, dig your dumper, dig your dumpster. One more time. Uh, Dig your bunker really deep. Anyway, guys, I'm going to wrap this up because uh, I need to go spread some wood chips while I still can. Nice little dog. Are you ready to go spread some wood chips? Say bye to the folks. Get the bug. Get that bug like that. Get a bug. Get that bug like that. Get that bug. Sancho, get the bug. Get that bug like that. Where's the bug? Get that bug. Get that bug like that. Get that bug. You need to get that bug like that. Get that bug while you still have bugs to get. Bye, guys.